Hello, my name is Manu Parami and I'm an Applications Engineer at Plexum. I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial video on configuring the digital and PWM outs on the Plex RT box. In this video, we will create a simple model using the digital and PWM out components from the Plex RT box target support library and observe the waveforms on an oscilloscope. To make the appropriate I.O. connections, we will use a digital breakout board with jumper wires. An oscilloscope is required to view real-time signals. The RTBOX target support library includes two different classes of digital output signals. The digital out component represents general purpose outputs that are updated once per model time step. This component is not suitable to generate PWM signals as their time resolution is limited to the discretization time of the model. The PWM out library component, on the other hand, decouples the PWM resolution from the simulation time step by utilizing the 7.5 nanosecond time resolution of the FPGA. The PWM out block is used in rapid control prototyping applications to generate a configurable PWM signal on an RT box digital output. The input to the PWM out block is a modulation index that is updated every model step. However, the rising and falling edges of the PWM output may occur between model steps. The RT box supports 32 digital output channels. Make note that any digital output pin can either be a regular digital out or a PWM out. Let's build a model using these two blocks and compare the outputs. First, we will make a modulator using a digital output and a carrier waveform to mimic how one may initially try to create a modulator. But this is the wrong way. This is not how you want to model your PWM outputs. Create a new model and place a digital out component from the RTBOX block library onto the schematic. Assign it to channel 30. Add a triangular wave generator and set the frequency to 5 kHz. Change the minimum and maximum signal values to 0 and 1 respectively. Set the duty cycle to 1 for a falling edge sawtooth waveform and apply the changes. Next, add a constant block and set the value to 0.3. Then add a relational operator block and set it to greater than or equal to. Now compare the output of the sawtooth carrier with the constant duty ratio of 0.3 and feed that result as an input to the digital out block. Save the model to a location of your choice. Remember that this is the wrong way of modeling the PWM outputs. Let's build the model on the RT box and look at the results. From the Coda menu, open the Coda options window and navigate to the parameter inlining tab. We'll use the parameter inlining feature so that we can adjust the duty ratio dynamically during the real-time simulation. Drag and drop the constant block from the schematic into the exceptions list to adjust the duty ratio on the fly while the real-time simulation is running on the RT box. From the General tab, set the discretization step size as 1 20th of the switching period and accept the changes. Next, select your RT box from the Target tab and build the model. Using a digital breakout board, Connect an oscilloscope probe between digital output 30 and a ground pin and observe the waveform. If you don't have a digital breakout board, connect to the oscilloscope using the digital out connector on the front panel of the RT box. Refer to the front panel tab of the RT box web interface or the RT box manual for a more detailed pinout specification. Then connect to the RT box via the external mode. On the main schematic, change the duty cycle from 0.3 to 0.32. To. 
we observe a change in the width of the square wave on the oscilloscope. If we continue to increase the duty cycle in 0.01 or 1% increments, we may not see an expected change in the duty ratio on the oscilloscope. Since the digital out block is only updated once every model step, we are not seeing the PWM resolution that we are expecting. Let's quickly compare the results using a PWM out block. This is the right way of modeling the PWM outputs. Drag and drop a PWM out block. If you look under the mask of the PWM out block to look at the offline implementation, it has an inbuilt modulator. This modulator updates at a 7.5 nanosecond resolution in real time. A duty ratio must be provided as an input to this block. Therefore, connect it to the constant block representing the duty ratio. Next, change the carrier type to sawtooth, carrier frequency to 5 kHz, carrier limits to 0, 0,1, and assign the PWM out to channel 31. Leave the other parameters as the default values and click Apply. Now, upload the model to the RT box and measure both digital output channels 30 and 31 using an oscilloscope. Next, connect to the RT box via the external mode. On the main schematic, change the duty cycle to 0.01 .01 and increase the value in 0.01 .01 increments. Notice that the digital output associated with the PWM out block has significantly higher PWM resolution since the PWM out block is updated with the FPGA sampling of 7.5 nanoseconds. If using the digital breakout board, make sure to enable the switches and LEDs and observe the difference in the brightness of the LED outputs at duty cycle of 0.01. We can see that the left LED is slightly brighter than the right LED. Also notice how the PWM out and digital out signals are not synchronized. For some applications where it is necessary to synchronize the PWM out signal with the model step, double click on the PWM out block and enable the synchronization with model step parameter. Note that this is only possible when the discretization step size is an integer multiple of the PWM period. The accuracy of the PWM signals generated by the RT box when using the PWM out component compared to the digital out component can also be observed when in code gen mode. Place the model created in a separate subsystem, enable code generation, choose the appropriate discretization step size, and select code gen as the simulation mode. Generate code and start the simulation. The top waveform is of digital out and the bottom waveform is of PWM out. It can be observed from the waveforms that the rising and falling edges of the digital out component are only updated once per model time step whereas the rising and falling edges of the PWM out block may occur between model steps. To quickly summarize, we have compared the difference in the PWM signals generated using the digital out and PWM out library blocks. Since the PWM out block provides a 7.5 nanosecond resolution, we always want to use PWM out block to generate PWM signals out of the RT box. This concludes the tutorial video on configuring the digital and PWM outputs on the Plex RT box. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thanks for watching.